Hey guys, John here. Welcome back to the course, How to Use Zebra HZ. This is video 21, and today we're talking about the distortion module. So it basically creates typical analog type saturation, and you might be wondering, wondering to yourself, this is not an init preset, what is going on? So in the manual they say, if used in the effects grid, this can mimic a complete guitar amplifier and speaker cabinet, to which I said, let's give that a try, and this is what I came up with. So yeah, it definitely is possible, and that was actually a lot of fun to make. And maybe it's in a future video or something that we can kind of dissect this patch and see how it's done. It's a little out of the scope for this video as that's more of a sound design kind of video. So let's go ahead and init preset and let's talk about this module because it actually is really cool. So underneath this first oscillator, let's select this here and let's go to the distortion. Where are you? Down over here, distortion one. And what you'll notice here, on this list, you'll have a distortion one and two, and in the effects grid, you're gonna have three and four. So kind of interesting. So basically, this thing starts with the input, right? So the amount of signal we're feeding into this pre-distortion, by the way, is gonna be determined by this input knob here. Next up, we have this pre-tilt here. We're gonna skip over the output for now, but next we have this pre-tilt. So basically, this is a combined low and high filter that changes the input signal before the distortion. So let's say, for example, we want to send more highs into the distortion or more lows into the distortion, we can do that. So let's take a listen to this here. So let's put our input back to default. So we have just a saw wave, and let's go pre-tilt to the left. What you'll notice is that it's gonna boost the lows a little bit and attenuate the highs. And the opposite's true. If we put it to the right, it's gonna attenuate the lows and then boost the highs. So it really depends on what type of signal that we want to be distorted. The, the more content that's gonna go into it, the more it's going to be distorted. And if we double click this in the center, it's going to be as is. Speaking of center, that's gonna be our next knob here. So this is gonna be the point where we can kind of move these filters around. It's the low and high shelf frequency control. And what's even cooler is we have a post tilt. So basically what we just talked about here, but this is gonna happen after the distortion. So we can kind of maybe send a little bit more highs into the distortion because we want that sound. But then after the distortion, we have that sound distorted. Then we kind of want to revert it kind of back to normal. And then that's kind of what we want to go with. So we do have that option there. And over here on the top right, we have this post filter. So we have dual band shelf and guitar cab. So basically this dual band shelf is gonna be a low and high shelving EQ at 100 Hertz and 10K. And then this one down over here, this guitar cab, they say it emulates a popular guitar cab of which I still wonder to this day. So depending on this type of filter, these low and highs are gonna be a little bit different. So on the dual band, this is going to be the low EQ and this is gonna be the high, so the 100 and the 10K. On the guitar cab right over here, this is basically going to be the low end base of the cab and then the right side, this side, this high knob here is gonna be the speaker edge as they say. And it's interesting because in the manual, as they say for the uh, realistic kind of guitar, the amplifier simulation kind of thing, is to use that in the effects grid. And generally, if you use this module in the effects grid down over here, you're gonna get a different sound. I've noticed when I'm making different kind of maybe bass acid-y kind of patches here, I generally, when I distort that, I'll kind of actually reach to put that inside the effects down over here as opposed to actually in this main grid here. But it really depends on the sound that you kind of want as well. And there's also quite a few different algorithms here for the type of distortion. We have tube class A. Let's give it some more input here. And go back to the dual band. Double click these back to default here. And it might be actually a little bit easier to see this if we have the oscillator as a sine wave. So let's go ahead and go ahead and select sine tree. So without this here, we have our sine wave. We have some nice distortion, and we can kind of scroll through these different types and see how they how they sound. I 
I've always kind of been partial to the class A and the class AB, but definitely depending on your type of sound, be aware that there are different types of algorithms of this distortion and different sounds can, or different algorithms can sound a little bit better on the patch that you're trying to make. So last thing, but not least before we part ways here is going to be the output knob, which is pretty self-explanatory. It is the output of this module. <laughs> So yeah, nothing too crazy there. So definitely play around with it. And also, if you have the chance, check it out in the effects grid because it's a little bit more aggressive, I find, down over there. So yeah, thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you learned something and we'll see you in the next video.